You look at the election, four more years for President Obama. I'm sure you were surprised when you were sitting there watching the results come in. What surprised you the most, do you think? What surprised me the most was that uh, his turnout operation was so good, uh, and the Republican Party's turnout operation was not as good as it was touted. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought we were going to win that race, uh, and I thought that the uh, uh, as the poll showed, the particularly the late surge showed, uh, that if our turnout operation was up to snuff, we would have won it, mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't. And I think that was really the thing. I think he was let down uh, by a political infrastructure that didn't work as well as perhaps he expected that it would. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, that the pundits, a lot of them got it big time wrong. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean. But a lot of them were saying it wasn't about Ohio at all. It came down to demographics. Well, it was demographics, but it was also turnout. Remember, in many areas, fewer Republicans mm -hmm. voted this time than voted for John McCain, for Lord's sake. And I think that Mitt Romney ran a much better campaign and was a far better candidate than McCain had been four years ago. Uh, but something was not working. And uh, so if they had, in fact, gotten it out and turned those folks out, he still would have won. Now, sure, there was a demographic problem and an age problem because, in fact, uh, Barack Obama got more young people out and got mm -hmm. a bigger margin than he did last time. Well, slightly lower margin, but uh, a couple million more votes. Uh, and he turned out other groups uh, in greater numbers than anyone thought he would. The common knowledge was that uh, they were not going to vote uh, in the numbers that they'd voted before because of the economy and because of all of the things that people were upset about. But in fact, they did. Mm -hmm. So uh, he won, fair and square, as they say. He didn't even have to get down to the point where his uh, friends could steal it for, for him in Chicago and elsewhere. And that's something we have to live with. And for us, uh, for those who believe in the Second Amendment, it's going to be a tough few years. Yeah, and you look at the fact that we ended up with a divided Congress, and already there's talk that Senator Feinstein has been meeting with the ATF to pursue the assault weapons ban. What do, what do we look at when, you're, when you see the Congress as it is right now? Well, I th you know, it's interesting, and we've got to sit down. It's going to take some time to analyze it. Uh, obviously, we still have a firewall in the House, uh, and I'm not sure that in the Senate that we were hurt that much uh, because we, some of the people that were elected were pro-Second Amendment, uh, but some of them who are Democrats will go along if the president pushes. Uh, you know, a good example is the career of Harry Reid, mm -hmm. who before Bill Clinton came in was very pro-Second Amendment. Then when he, when he had a Democratic president who wanted to go after guns, he was F-rated. Uh, and then when he didn't have orders from a president, he sort of bounced back a little bit. Well, he'll be F-rated again under this president. But the interesting thing is, I don't, I, I mean, I expected it, but a lot of people didn't, even a lot of our people. Uh, when I was out there in the country, we were saying, well, you know, he didn't really do anything to us during the first term. Mm. And our position was, if he gets a chance, he's coming right at us. Yeah. Well, the Reuters report this morning, hours after he's reelected, he sends a message to the UN, I want the small arms treaty on my desk. Mm -hmm. I want to have a chance to sign it. Uh, you've got Feinstein and the others meeting. There is going to be an all-out assault on the Second Amendment, led by this president and his party. Now, in the Congress, good luck to him, because I think we have a bipartisan majority still in both houses that'll stand up for us. But when you get to the courts and to the United Nations, you've got a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. So we are going to, we've prevailed in the past. You know, the one thing you can say about the Second Amendment community is that we're more unified today and bigger than we've ever been. And we faced really serious challenges in the past, but now we're going to have to really buckle down and be ready for a couple of years of hard slogging. Uh, and it, it's not going to be easy, but I think that uh, we prevailed before, and I think we'll prevail again. And I'm sure, David, you've seen the headlines. There's the critics out there saying that the NRA wasn't able to deliver or have an impact on the election. Your I, response to that? I think that's ridiculous. I mean, we had a tremendous uh, influence. It was not enough to overcome the surge he got from voters who, frankly, weren't ours and also weren't concerned about the economy or anything else. The young people that he got from the college campuses, mm -hmm. these various groups that he sort of micro-targeted and got, uh, they overwhelmed the vote. In normal circumstances, uh, we would have made a, a huge difference, just as we did in Wisconsin during the, the uh, Walker recall vote as we have in a number of other places. And, in fr and frankly, I was out there, and Wayne was, and Chris, 
and we did have some impact. There are a number of House seats that were saved as a result of our activities. Uh, I think the Senate would have been worse if we hadn't been doing what we could. But you know, in every election, there's a winner and there's a loser. Uh, and you do what you can. I, I told people, at, I was campaigning in, uh, for orphan congressional seats in, in Minnesota and, and uh, Illinois right up to I know Election you Day. And, you know, I, and I told them my desire, and I know the desire of everybody here, was to be able to go to bed saying, we did everything we could. Mm -hmm. And that's all you can do. Yeah, and, and I know you were on the Glenn Beck show right before the election, and Glenn Beck said, you know what, I can tell you this. If he wins, if Obama wins, you're going to see gun sales surge like they never did before. i got to tell you, it's already happening. That's right. But it's really interesting. when We were talking with Miles Hall out in uh, Oklahoma City, and he owns the H&H &H gun range out there and gun shop. And he was saying the one thing that he found very interesting is these were first-time buyers, and they were looking him right in the eye and say, you know what? I am so concerned right now where all of our individual freedoms are headed right. right now. They know. I mean, our people and people that uh, they think about it know that the Second Amendment is about freedom. It's not about just about guns. And they recognize that kind of a threat. I must have met a hundred people who, who said, you know, keep at it. I don't, I'm not a gun owner. I'm not a hunter. But but I support everything you're doing because I know what's at stake and I know what this means and I know what the Second Amendment means to so many people and to the country. So uh, I think that I've been asked about these gun sales and I said there are two reasons for it. First is Barack Obama and the fear that either they're not going to be, be able to buy a gun in the future or uh, that they're going to have to pay such an exorbitant price for it because of restrictions and taxes and the like that they better get their firearms now. And the second reason, frankly, is that firearms today are far more popular. The Second Amendment community today, the people involved in the shooting sports, the people that are in competitive shooting, is far larger than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. uh, and well, look, look at what happened after Hurricane Sandy. That's right. What did all those people up there do? They couldn't rely on on the police. They were doing all they could, right. but they were, you know, they couldn't be there to answer the response immediately. So what do they do? They're using their firearms. They're putting up signs. And that's why people stayed in their homes was to protect their property, and they and they were they were ready for what happened. And remember, think about Sandy, and the people that were in charge of those jurisdictions. Bloomberg, Christie, mm -hmm. and others who are very anti-Second Amendment, very anti-gun. They, however, could not do what happened in New Orleans with Katrina, which was to confiscate the guns. Why? Because we went to court and we got a ruling that that was not something that you could do under those circumstances. So the, the NRA's influence on these questions in terms of protecting the rights of individual citizens to defend themselves and protecting their right to privately own a firearm is not something that stops on any day, mm -hmm. and, the, and the rights we've preserved will continue to be preserved. We're going to fight this. Our members are going to fight it. I've talked to a lot of members since the election, and a lot of people who, who put in a lot of effort and a lot of resources into this, and they've said, we know now that we have to fight even harder. So we're ready to do that, and we will do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, do you find yourself, though, shaking your head when you consider, here's an administration, we've got the attack on Benghazi. We've got Fast and Furious, just to name a few. Scandals, cover-up, stonewalling. I mean, is that what we can expect the next four years, more of that? We can expect a lot more of that. And how that wears in his second term is another question. If we get more of that, then it's going to be harder for him to do the things he wants to do to us. One thing every one of our members and every gun owner in America ought to be demanding now uh, because we laid off of the demand because we were hoping that it would change when he was defeated, is Eric Holder should pack his bags and leave. Well, you'll feel This good man has been the head of a criminal cover-up. He now says, I don't know what my future is. Yeah. We know what his future should be, and we should demand that he get out, and he get out now, and we should encourage the Congress to continue the investigation of what this administration did uh, and, and get some kind of a reckoning and, uh, and, and, and take care of punishing those who are guilty for breaking the law and then criminally covering up their activities. Well, and you said it. He hinted that today, that he may not be around for the second term. And who are they looking at on the short list? One of the people, Janet Napolitano. That's a great Wouldn't idea. that be something <laughs> if she moves in there? But, you know, the president said the best is yet to come. 
we got a lot of work to do. That all, that all depends on how you define best. Right, and so gun owners need to be realizing that there's a lot at stake, and he may not do it the first couple of months, but fasten your seatbelt. Well, he's going to try right away. You remember, he told, he told uh, Sarah Brady of handgun control, I have to operate under the radar for now. Just like he told the president of Russia, I need some flexibility mm -hmm. till the election. The election's over, and what has he done? Within hours, he's come right at us, right at the Second Amendment. We're on his target list, uh, and thank goodness he can't send drones after us. But the fact is, he and his administration are going to do everything they can to gut the Second Amendment, and we've got to fight them step by step by step. And, you know, the U.N., as you mentioned, uh, signed off on that resolution. We have been reporting on that, that it was coming down the pike uh, from when July, when the, the, when the talks collapsed. But the big question, as you were saying, is right now, you know, the delegation up until now has been pretty much saying, hey, you know what, hands off when it comes to our Second Amendment. But here you have a president, right, who has already said the Constitution gets in his way, that he wants to work through the U.N., so we don't know what they're going to say now well, remember, when they go into his, these meetings. Well, remember, his spokesmen at the U.N. are saying the same thing that he says. He has said all along, I'm a supporter of the Second mm -hmm. Amendment. I just think we ought to have common sense restrictions. You know, those are the exact words that Michael Bloomberg uses and that they all use. Oh, we won't let you interfere with our Second Amendment rights, but gun registries, uh, limits on sales, assault weapons bans, all of these things, they don't really interfere with our Second Amendment. Those are just common sense restrictions, like higher taxes on ammunition, uh, all kinds of things that could, in essence, mean that your Second Amendment rights don't mean very much. And, you know, they refused to put it in writing. Uh, John Bolton asked for it. If you don't want to go after our civilian ownership, put it in writing. And as you mentioned, ammunition, that is a real hot-button issue because right. if they can't get at the civilian ownership one way, they'll get it through the ammunition. And that's, that's something that Barack Obama proposed initially during his first term and then backed off because he couldn't get it through Congress. It's something they're experimenting with now out in Chicago where his former chief of staff is the mayor saying, let's put onerous taxes on ammunition purchases because that'll get them, mm -hmm. uh, including 22 ammunition. I guess there's a lot of thugs in Chicago uh, and gang wars are used 22 rimfire. I, I hadn't known that before. But the fact of the matter is that they're going to try all of these things, and we have to fight every single mm -hmm. one of them. You know, you were talking about the way the Congress has shaped out. Um, and, you know, there's already Senator Reid saying he wants to change the filibuster rule. What will that mean if, in fact, the assault weapons ban? Then you won't be able to stop him. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the key. They want – this is a president who has said in the past, before re-election, that he wishes he could govern the way they govern in China, mm -hmm. where he didn't have to deal with these legislatures and these separation of powers and the balance of powers. And eliminating the filibuster rule goes right along with that so that he can rule by fiat mm -hmm. with the lockstep support of his partisans and that they can just roll over the opposition. The beauty of this country, the strength of this country, is not that our government is the most efficient in the world, but it's a government that protects the minority's rights while at the same time allowing the majority to rule. What Barack Obama and his friends want to do is strip away the protection of minority rights, and that would be us, mm -hmm. so that they can do whatever they want regardless of how anybody else feels. Now, this is a president who People are saying, well, he doesn't have a mandate because he didn't get a lot of votes. He got fewer votes than he did last time, a much lower percentage. That's unusual. Yeah, it's unusual. He doesn't care because all the election was was a way to keep him in power so he can, he can rule as undemocratically or as autocratically as he would like in order to achieve his ideological agenda. So you expect he's going to go after the gun issue sooner than later? Yes, I do. Fasten your seatbelt. What's your message? Just stay on. See, you know, we have not lost. We've lost a battle, a very important battle. Uh, but we're not going to lose this war. We're going to protect the Second Amendment because there are so many of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are the, 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 uh, the, the people in this country who understand the importance of the Second Amendment, who are involved in the shooting sports, are in the millions and millions and millions. And the forces are growing. And we didn't, you know, they didn't all vote on that issue this time, frankly, because we couldn't reach every one of them. Mm -hmm. And because unless we had reached them or unless they had seen that debate, the town hall debate where Barack Obama came out of the closet, 
a lot of them believe this stuff that they were hearing. Well, don't worry about Barack Obama on guns. There are other reasons to be concerned about him, but on guns, he's not done anything. <laughs> you remember Chris Matthews said we were paranoid yeah. <laughs> because the, the idea that Barack Obama would go after Second Amendment rights is so absurd as to be laughable. Well, nobody's laughing today. All righty, and we'll see what happens, and thanks for stopping by. Always a pleasure. Thank you.